one of the things I had in mind was Jim Davis' mother, because you're a mother and he has a mother. So I hope you sort of understand that because he does care. Okay. Well, let's see what happens. And you're listed as a witness, so I have a feeling you're going to get to tell your whole story today as well if we get past that first part where we get your son to talk, okay? Okay. All right. Thank you. Better talk or be in trouble with me. Huh? You better talk to her or you'll be in trouble with me. I understand. I may mention that as well. Okay? okay. Thank okay. you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Um, Unless anybody has any other ideas, I'm ready to bring him in here and give, give it a shot. I'm going to give an opening before we're either going to even going to find out what's going to be able to be said. Yes, Your Honor. Just yes, so that gives the opportunity to play. I'll, sir, I was going to give you all an opportunity, but uh, it just seems like we ought to know whether we're going to hear from Mr. Piercy or not because your opening could be really long or you could cut out some parts, right? It's going to be short either way, 10 minutes. From? Did you say short and then 10 minutes? I thought that for lawyers. All right, I'll, I'll concede that point. Go ahead. <laughs>
and the trial against Jack Piercy on what we now know is perhaps one of the most disgraceful jailhouse snitches this state has ever seen. And he tells this ridiculous story of how James Daly is moseying past his cell, a known snitch, and, and turns to him and words or something and says, hey, by the way, I killed that girl. Your Honor, I'm going to object at this time. I know it's opening statement. This is what he expects to prove, but I know what the claim is. And they, in the last five minutes, he hasn't mentioned anything that he expects to prove that goes to the claim that has been granted in this particular case. He's getting to it, and I understand your objection. I'm going to let him go because he's got four more minutes on his ten minutes. And, and wet pants. They say wet pants. And you're going to hear today that James Daly is picked up six months later, and he knows that the, the Mr. Piercy's girlfriend and a friend of Mr. Piercy's have said, well, he had wet pants. And he, he could have done what a guilty person would do and say, they're lying. My pants weren't wet because certainly they dried by now, right? And what he does is he lives with what the state would characterize as an inconvenient fact. Why? Because it's the truth. And he believes if he tells the truth, it will be believed. And who is the first person ever, ever that has gone on record and said, you know how he got his pants wet? It was at the Bel Air Causeway. Jack Piercy. Jack Piercy. Your Honor, they proceeded on a theory that we now know as a result of this deposition is demonstrably false. Jack Piercy, not knowing what he was doing and not knowing that I have damning proof, has admitted under oath where the state had an opportunity to cross-examine him in a deposition just a few weeks ago that he was with the victim alone. Alone during the exact time that your own medical examiner said Ms. Baggio was killed. And so he told the truth to me in a, in, a, in a thoughtful, emotional moment. When I went to visit him, he didn't know me. I told him all I want is the truth. He got emotional. He even shed a tear. And he told me he cannot die for something that I did. He told me he would come over here and tell him the truth and tell the truth. Hold on, Senior Counselor, are you going to be a witness in this case? Because you sound like you're testifying now. I'm not testifying. I'm going to ask him questions as to what he told me and what he said. All these things that he's not hearing his deposition. Yes. Okay. So you're going to ask him if he told you these things? Yeah. You expect he's going to say, no, I didn't tell you these things? I'm going to see. Do you have any good faith basis to believe that he's going to tell you that he said any of these things? I think that he might. All right. Keep going. <clears throat> And your honor, he has confessed over and over and over again, and every time he confesses, he finds a way to wiggle out. You are gonna hear, your honor, in his own words today, on those tape recorded calls, he tells his mother, I'll kill him. His words, not mine, talking about this proceeding, that he will just change his mind again and kill him. Your honor, he can no longer play games with our system of criminal justice in this man's life. He cannot kill it. Because whether he takes the fifth today or he doesn't, that testimony is admissible. And if it comes up, I will argue to you how. It is absolutely admissible as prior testimony. Under State v. Daly from last year, didn't the Florida Supreme Court say no? Your Honor, I will raise it. Can I make the argument now? Yeah, after, I'll uh, wait. I'll I'll wait. We'll, we'll, we'll save it. See what, see what happens. But okay. uh, there's literally a Supreme Court case with Mr. Daly's name on it that says otherwise. I respectfully disagree. We can take All that. Right. We'll, right. We'll, we'll hear it. Okay. We'll hear it. Okay. And I, I can tell you, Your Honor, that this easily constitutes new evidence. That it certainly had the trial court known, and it was unknown to the trial court, certainly the counsel and the parties, that he would have admitted and certainly would have produced an acquittal. And it makes no difference if he now comes in here and says, oh, but I've changed my mind now. Now, now Daly did it, because that goes to his credibility, not its admissibility. And we not only have that new confession signed under the penalty of perjury, a declaration that he signed, 
We also have new details that he adds. And now he had sex with his wife in the bathroom that night. Now he gives details about, oh, well, the lie detector examiner in the deposition that the lie detector yeah, I'm not of lying. Uh, um, Again, we're not, uh, we're not addressing a particular claim, and we're going into evidence that is clearly is not going to be admissible and cannot be used as substantive evidence. I understand what you're saying. Overruled. The opening statements are opening statements. I'll, I'll hear the rest of your opening statement. We'll see if the state wants to give one, and then let's get to the let's get to the headliner and see if Mr. Pierce is going to testify. He has now admitted, Your Honor, under oath, where the state had the opportunity to cross-examine him. We now have under oath the only eyewitness in this case, Jack Piercy, in his own words, saying, "I and I alone was alone with Shelley Baggio." from 1.30 to 3.30, because he has no idea that what we have are records, phone records of when a critical phone call was made by Osa Shaw that show that he has falsely testified in the past as Mr. Piercy, that he actually dropped Osa Shaw off at 11.30 because he knows what the state's theory is. And Your Honor, they say it takes a long time, but sometimes the truth catches up to the lie. Now we have phone records to put that lie finally to rest for good. Okay. And I would ask your honor at the end of this case, at the end of this proceeding, to let the truth be heard. The Florida rules of evidence dictates it. All we ask, the time for sympathy for James Daly is far gone. He doesn't ask for anyone's sympathy. All he wants is justice. And I submit to you, your honor, that if we simply apply the rules and the law, that justice is what we'll get, a full and fair hearing where we can once and for all present the cumulative evidence of Mr. Dale, of Mr. Daly's innocence to this court to consider. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. State, you wish to give an opening or do you want to reserve until we see whether we're actually having Mr. Uh, Pearson testify? For the latter, I have no idea of what we're going to hear from Mr. Pearcy, so I have no idea what to mention to the court. All right, I'll, let, I'll let you reserve until uh, until uh, the close of the defense case. Defense has one witness, or do you plan on calling more after Mr. Pearcy if he testifies? Well, and how it goes, we may be calling one of their witnesses. All right. Well, what I'll do is I'll let you reserve to the close of Mr. Pearcy's testimony and see if he testifies, because sometimes that happens, sometimes it doesn't. Um, you know, something came up there. You, you pronounced uh, the victim's name two separate ways, Baggio and Boggio. Is there a member of the, the family here that can tell me what the correct pronunciation is? How do I pronounce it correctly? Boggio. All right. My apologies to the court, and no, especially to Ms. No, 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 no problem. I, and I've, I've heard it pronounced very many ways, but with a last name like Syracuse, so you can imagine I've heard my name pronounced about a million ways, too. And, and Every, I always assume everybody's trying to get it correct, and I want to try and get it correct when, uh, when we're speaking about the young lady. Um, all right, so when we do this, I'm going to have Mr. Piercy stand at the podium and face me rather than put him in the witness box when I try and discuss with him is the idea that he's going to testify today. And the reason I'm going to do that is I think if he's focused on the audience and looking at the attorneys, that's going to influence him and distract him on his decision. So I'll have him stand there at the podium while I talk to him. And I'm making just a couple more notes of things to talk to him about here. 